What are you tracking at GitHub, you know, from a metrics perspective? And even better, do, do any of those metrics kind of relate back to team culture in any way? I mean, I'll just say this. There's not one metric to rule them all. We've heard it over and over. Like, yeah. I think somewhere somebody was pitched this, like, idea that they're going to be able to find this golden number that's going to tell you and unlock the secrets of productivity and performance. It just doesn't exist, right? Because people are humans. And I feel like it's really a menagerie, a menagerie of metrics that really make up the output that you see, because it's not just this collection of activities. We can get lost. The problem, the problem is when you're like really immature and you're kind of understanding of what success looks like, you can sit and say really and take qualitative data and say like, okay, like here's how many pull requests we had. Here's even our, you know, pull, pull request review cycle time. And here's, you know, how many uh, actual changes happen. That means we're hitting the, the, the mark. You just can't do that. Not that I'm going to say people are going to, I keep talking about games. I guess I need to play video games today. Uh, game, gamify the system. But really what it is, it's like, are you being honest with the measurement of what success looks like? Like, have you really given it critical thinking? And so when I think about metrics and, and what we think about at GitHub is like, we do the standard one. Like I get the honor and privilege to work with Dr. Nicole Forstian. So like, I'm very like all up in her like, Nicole, what does your research say about this? And then my peer, Rachel Potvin, like she led developer research at Google for like, I don't know, like a decade. And so like these two amazingly smart humans that have done, you know, almost their entire career thinking about what drives productivity, you know, it's really is that menagerie, that collection. And so we use, you know, quantifiable and quantifiable data sets. Like, I think you have to add like the things that you know and hold are true. Like we know, right? Like if your review time is really long, probably or people are probably getting anxious, right? They're getting imposter syndrome on the because then we bring the human back into it. It's like right. they're getting imposter syndrome. They don't think they feel a part of the team. Or maybe you have a global team. Like I have a developer. I hope he listens to this in Australia. That's always like, dang up. We need better reviewers for Australia because we have, you know, people in APAC, but we need to rethink and think better how we can support them. Because like review time is like break some connective tissue, right? Even when you mm -hmm. don't like consciously think about it. So I think that in conjunction with surveys and reviews and looking at like people's performance and like the career ladders and, and their progression, because people want to work hard. They want to have fulfillment. They want to feel good about it. They want to see the output of their own personal changes. And then that will help manifest like the products that you're making. So I think it really all goes together. So we do coming back to the the question at hand, you know, we use, we use the Dora, but we also use, you know, CSTAT, PSTAT, internal customer satisfaction. We all do surveys, but then you look at different data sets that you may not realize because engagement is just a really hard thing to measure. 